Hey everybody, it's Peter from Brantford Kia and welcome to our live video. It is Thursday and we are talking about maybe does it make sense to buy a new vehicle instead of a used vehicle and behind me are two options you might want to consider. A lot of times people buy used vehicles because they're looking to get a good value, good to save some money, to buy something that's not too expensive as a purchase price. We've got two options here that are not really talked about a lot on YouTube and I want to go through what they are. So before we get started, I'm just going to show you how to join us uh, before I get too far ahead of myself. Uh, you may notice someone in behind me. Kevin is here today with me. My buddy Kevin is taking care of a whole bunch of things for us. Uh, so he's going to be in the background. Don't worry. I see him. I know he's there. We're all good. All right, those are our two vehicles. If you are not watching us live every single day, every single weekday, excuse me, we go live on YouTube and I'll show you how to join us here. We've got a few things going on here. But uh, anyways, I'll show you how to join us. You simply go to Brantford Kia's YouTube page. You're probably already on it, but if you just search for Brantford Kia and uh, you can search right there in search menu. Where am I? Search menu right there. Uh, all you have to do is refresh this page. If I can get to my, there we go. Hit refresh. Sometimes you will see the live video right here. Hey, today it shows up. If it's not showing up there for you, just go to this uh, videos tab right here. And when you click that tab, the first video will say this live now tab. As soon as you click that, you will see there's our video. And I'm just waiting for the ads to show up. Come on, keep loading. There we go. All right, so we've got the comments there. All right, so I can see your comments. I'll read them in one second. Oh, you guys are always talking about the 2021 Sedona. Okay, we'll talk about that at the end of the video for sure. All right, so we're going to be live for about the next half hour. I'm taking your questions, and if at any point I've earned your like on this video, whether you like the cars, whether you like what I'm saying, maybe you like Kevin over there. If there's some reason that uh, you like something in this video, do me a favor, hit the like uh, button on the video, and uh, maybe I can earn your subscription as well. That would be great. And uh, if you want to know what we're doing every day, today I was a little unsure if I'd be here because I had a conference that I had to attend. And the nice thing about uh, 2020 is you don't really have to attend any conferences. You can go uh, to them on meetings on the computer, and that means I don't miss any of these times here. Anyways, if you want to know what we're doing, go to my Instagram page, at Peter underscore Brantford underscore Kia. Uh, you can follow me there, and I always keep you updated with what's going on. If I'm going to miss a video that day, I'll let you know there. If I'm going to make a video, you'll see it as well. So if you're on Instagram, that's a great way to follow me. And uh, like I said, hopefully we can, uh, you can comment there. The other benefit of going to my Instagram page is, uh, for instance, today I posted about these two vehicles. If there's a vehicle that you're interested in, you can, one, you can let me know on uh, Instagram. You can also let me know on YouTube. But if you see the vehicle that you like on Instagram, you can ask me your question before the video starts, and I'll make sure that I answer your question. So what are we doing today? Well, we're talking about why you may want to buy a new vehicle instead of used. And because this is a live video, we're going to talk about this vehicle in front of me. Uh, this is a Kia Seltos. It's an LX front wheel drive. And the vehicle behind it is a Kia Forte LX as well. The real reason to talk about this, especially this blue vehicle here, this Forte, the real reason to talk about that is right now for a few more days, uh, Kia will make six months worth of payments on this car. In addition to being excellent financing rates, in addition to being a uh, Kia loyalty bonus, if you are a um, uh, first responder as far as these COVID stuff, uh, so if you work in a care home, uh, various uh, jobs like that where you're involved with uh, working for this COVID stuff, you get an extra discount right now. And in many cases, uh, we found that this particular car is actually less expensive to buy, especially if you're financing with these finance rates, it's less expensive to buy than a uh, used vehicle. So that's kind of an interesting, weird dilemma that's come up just because of the uh, COVID stuff. And then the other vehicle I wanna show you is our brand new vehicle. The newest vehicle in our lineup is the Seltos. The Seltos is interesting because the lease rates on it are fantastic. This is a 2021 Kia Seltos, so next year, it's still going to be the current model year. Uh, it's, uh, depending on the trim line, the, some of the Seltos's, uh, their residual value is as high as 9% higher than the competitive Honda. So if you're looking at leasing, sometimes that leasing payment can come in under the price of a used uh, vehicle's monthly payment, and you're into a brand new vehicle. So really what I'm going to do is show you the vehicles. I'm not going to force anyone to buy a vehicle uh, new if they want to buy used, but we have had a few people walk in with a certain budget in mind, and leave with a brand new vehicle when they didn't expect to. And sometimes that makes sense for some people. So I wanna show you two kind of entry level options that aren't super expensive 
and they have uh, a lot of really nice features. Now, someone's asking, does it have power tailgate? Does it have sunroof? Uh, no, it doesn't. The, first of all, these are uh, base models of both uh, vehicles. Now, I shouldn't say that. The Forte actually is available in a manual transmission. The reason I didn't throw that in here is because very few of you can still drive manual and uh, almost none of you buy it even if you can drive it. Just like myself, Kevin and I both can drive manual no problem. Neither one of us have a manual car uh, that we drive, I don't think. Nope, there we go. So there we go. So manual transmission is not really something that we sell a whole lot of. Uh, we do have them. We have more manuals than anybody else. If you want a Forte manual, we have several of them in stock. The other thing is that a manual transmission used to be the option for better fuel mileage, and that is no longer the case. This Forte gets exceptional fuel mileage, um, and it gets better mileage with the automatic than with the manual. So let's talk mileage for a second. One reason you may want to go new instead of used this model here is the 20, was introduced in 2019, has an IVT automatic transmission. You don't need to know what that is. Uh, I can explain that later, but basically why we put it in, it gets better fuel efficiency. It drives very well. And um, here's the fuel efficiency numbers. Now, don't let those numbers fuel you. 7.9 liters in the city, 5.9 liters per 100 kilometers on the highway. Those numbers are easily beaten by just about everyone here. Uh, some of even the Leadfoots have been surprised when they take it on the highway and they, you know, commute to Toronto or something like that. They've been able to beat that 5.9 liters per 100 kilometers. This particular car, on many of our cars, I can beat the fuel economy numbers. This particular car and the Seltos both seem to be vehicles that I can exceed the mileage numbers by quite a bit. Uh, kind of an interesting turn of events. They used to be hard to exceed and uh, now that they've do mileage numbers the way they do, uh, they're real world numbers, and a lot of us can beat them without a whole lot of difficulty. This one's 8.2 and 7.1, so let's just get that in mind, 8.2, 7.1, this one is 7.9 and 5.9. So you'll notice the city highway, or the city fuel mileage, is very similar on these cars, but the more fuel efficient car is better on the highway, and that's uh, still the reason, I mean, a lot of us love SUVs, I am an SUV lover, uh, more than a sedan lover, However, sedans still get better mileage, especially on the highway, and that's just, it comes down to fuel efficiency, basic physics. Both these cars have the same engine and same transmission, so it gives you an idea of how much more efficient a vehicle is, like a car, on the highway, just due to aerodynamic efficiency. There's really not a whole lot of differences. They may have programmed those transmissions a little bit differently, but mechanically, uh, they are the same thing, uh, both in engine and transmission. So we're gonna take a look at some of these. Uh, we're gonna take a look at the trunk to start, and uh, those of you that know that uh, who are my regulars, you'll be able to comment and tell me what's coming up in one of these trunks. You guys can also tell me. So there's two days in a row I didn't have my teddy with me. So my teddy bear is what I use to measure trunk sizes. I find him convenient. He fits into any size trunk. Uh, he's also extremely large. My dad was here the other day and he watches the occasional video of mine. And uh, he was a little impressed with the size of teddy. He's quite big. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pop open the trunk here. We're going to start over here. We're going to talk about the Kia Seltos. Now, the Kia Seltos is a subcompact SUV, they call it. That being said, it has a larger trunk space than many compact SUVs. So, really, a lot of people in this class, they want something that is an all-wheel drive type vehicle, and they want something with some space, and they want something that sits a little taller up. This is most of those right here. I chose the front wheel drive model today simply because I wanted to go with the very base model to show you the kind of value that you can get in an entry level vehicle. You can add $2,000 to the price of this car, get all wheel drive with a little bit larger wheels. Uh, actually has a little different suspension on the rear as well because of that all wheel drive system. But this car, I chose to go with everything but the all wheel drive in that base model. So again, all that higher seating position, those kind of things, bigger trunk. I could have gone with a Forte 5 for just the bigger trunk, but that gets a little bit, uh, kind of muddies the waters as far as what people want. This is a traditional crossover, but it is a front wheel drive. So I'm gonna show you underneath the floor here. We're gonna pull these floor mats out for a second. And this floor can drop down just like that. Super simple to do and you've increased your trunk size. And uh, you can raise or lower that. What I like about it in the lower position is you can look at right here, if you have uh, your groceries or something like that, maybe you've got soup cans or oranges or apples. If you lower that floor, and let's say you were to park your driveways maybe on a slant of some sort, nothing you have is gonna roll out the back when the seat's like that, or when the floor's like that. Now you ask, why is the floor not like that all the time? 
Well, if you fold the seats down right now, there'll be a little bit of a bump up to the seats that are folded down. And uh, when you put the seat in the higher position, you can slide things through right across onto those folded seats. So I don't have a problem showing you that in a few minutes if you want. Uh, somebody asked if these are the same price vehicles, and that's a good question. Uh, they are not, and uh, the reason I didn't do the exact same price is because I just wanted to show you, again, if you're thinking about moving from your compact sedan used car into a new car, this is, and you're thinking about going used, that's kind of the entry level price there. Same thing here. Maybe I want to move into an SUV, but you think you have to go used to get some of the options you want. I'm going to show you that you can probably get some of those options in a new car and around the same price. So real quick pricing. I always go MSRP. I don't include the freight in my pricing for comparison. $22,995 on there. And 17, oh, sorry, excuse me. I'm way off. $19,295 right there. So $19,295, $22,995. So there is some pricing difference in these two cars. Um, and we'll talk about some of the features you get extra in this higher price. It's not just a premium for an SUV. You actually do get a number of features in the SUV that make some sense. Because like I said, same engine, same transmission. In theory, they shouldn't be too far, the pricing shouldn't be too far apart. They are, but because you have some extra features. So we'll talk about those as we go through here. Uh, trunk space, like I said, very, very good size here. One little thing I will point out, these uh, seats here, I'll try to show you right now. If you flip this lever here, up like that, you can fold, oh, can I do it? There we go. Fold it back like that. So you can see right now, you've got a little bit extra of that latch showing here. The seats can recline for comfort. The way they are right now is fully comfortable right here. Uh, but it gives you a little bit more trunk space. I did steal a little tiny bit of trunk space and add a little bit of comfort there. So we'll leave those seats like that. Now, one thing I want to show you is floor space. We're going to come back to that in a second. In this particular vehicle, I'm going to pop the trunk by just using the floor, uh, floor handle right there. In this trunk, those of you looking for Teddy, there he is. The Kia Forte has a class leading trunk space. Now, the way I measure trunk space with Teddy other than jamming him in there, is I press his tummy up against the back of the seat there. And I want to show you something pretty interesting. I'm looking straight down at the trunk. Teddy is a massive teddy bear, and he's got a lot of space. There was a lot of controversy the past couple days because I didn't, make, uh, didn't get Teddy into the last two videos. People thought maybe something happened to him. He's fine. But look at all the floor space in the trunk here. Now, I'm going to do the same thing in the Seltos. We're going to set his tummy up against the back seats and you're going to see the difference because a lot of people buy an SUV because they've got larger trunks and I'm going to kind of challenge that a little bit. There's cargo volume and then there is also cargo space. So cargo volume wise, the Seltos has much more, but you can see here, there's only a little bit of space here to there between uh, Teddy's tummy and the back of the car. So you have less floor space, but more cargo volume. So if you're the kind of person that me, like me that goes camping and stacks all your gear nice and high, no problem. The Seltos is definitely the way to go. You also have the larger opening in a, in a uh, SUV. In the sedan here, you have a smaller opening, which you can see right here. Smaller opening right like that, but you do have much longer floor space. And again, much, much longer. It's hard to show in video without Teddy in there but there's a lot of floor space. So if you are the kind of person that just takes a lot of groceries home, you're probably not stacking them super high. The sedan will actually have more usable space for someone like you. So something to keep in mind, uh, if you're thinking trunk volume, uh, I always say the specs don't matter. And people get, well, there was one person especially got very upset with me when I said the specs don't matter, but they don't. Uh, if headroom is enough for you, then you don't need to worry about which one has three inches more headroom. Uh, same thing with trunk space. Just because the trunk space holds more liters of volume, it may not be more practical for you. We're gonna hop in the driver's seat here in a second, but if you have any questions, I'm just gonna jump over and see what we've got. Uh, I think I got a few of them. Uh, oh wait, that is for America and Canada's electronic drive. Yes, so yeah, so S trim, yeah. So just, so if, if you're American and watching us, my base level trim is called the LX front wheel drive. It is similar to your S, but you'll have to tell me some differences. I'm assuming we have heated seats in ours and you don't have that in yours, but there are some differences in the Canadian and American. When I get my Celtics, I wanna take Teddy for a ride, get a burger and beer. Ooh, I get to go. Okay, I definitely want the burger. The beer is optional for me. All right. Okay, let's hop in the, okay, which one should you guys, you guys tell me which one you want me to jump in first. We're gonna hop in the driver's seat. We're gonna compare some technologies on these two cars. And uh, so let me know if you wanna see one ahead of the other, if there's a particular vehicle you wanna see more. 
Do you mind the plastic on the Seltos on the exterior? Okay, great question. So Seltos exterior, this is something they almost everybody does with their SUVs. They have to make them look cool and tough and raised off the ground. So what they do is they put a lot of dark plastic on the bottom. On this particular model, it's all dark plastic. So you can see that right there. On some of the higher trim levels of Seltos, this black plastic ends up with a gloss plastic in there. And on the higher trim levels, again, you end up with some body color trim in that same area. The reason they put that in there is exactly like I said, to make it look like it's more raised up, more taller. Uh, biggest thing is uh, we can't say station wagon anymore in the car industry, and we don't want to look like a station wagon. So we make sure we make them look uh, visually like they have raised ground, ground clearance. It does have some ground clearance on the Seltos, a tiny bit more on the all-wheel drive ones just because the wheels are a little bit bigger. Uh, but, uh, you know, we're talking half an inch difference. It's actually pretty good ground clearance for its class, more than something like the Kia Soul for sure. And again, more than the Forte. So which one am I getting in? You guys are all saying Seltos. Okay, so we're hopping in the Seltos first. Again, base model Seltos. Here we go, cloth seats, uh, power windows, power locks, all the kinds of stuff you would expect. Cool looking, uh, grills uh, to the speaker grills there. You still have tweeters in the speakers as well. It's not like base, base, base. Nice little uh, silver trim around there on the, on the uh, uh, vents there. So you've got a lot of options just jumping in. Tilt and telescopic steering wheel. Now I just said that, I better make sure it is. Yes, tilt and telescopic steering wheel with lots of reach. Kind of standard for uh, every Seltos, that uh, tilt and telescopic. Here's what you get. You have a key start. I'll show you the key right now. Both the key for the Seltos and the Forte are identical. Uh, the Forte has an extra trunk button right here. We could show you that in a second, but if I forget, just imagine the exact same key. So there you go. This one does not have remote start, and that's the key. It is a jackknife style key, so the blade folds into the key, and you just have the fob in your pocket when you get going. We're going to turn the car to on, but we're not going to start it up because we are indoors, and Kevin... Uh, there's some rules and laws about gassing Kevin out of here because if he uh, can't do his job, then I have to start painting and nobody wants that, especially not me. All right, so what we've got here is the same dash you have in many of the higher trim level Seltos. The top of the line has a bigger display screen in the center, but many of the lines just above this have the same dash. Clear and easy to read, simple, display screen in the center. You've got lots of options in that display screen, including your drive modes. Uh, all kinds of things. And I should mention, just even drive modes on a car of this class may be one reason to jump into something newer because you have this cool little knob down here. Not the cleanest thing in the world. Tim's not going to be happy if he's watching. You turn it like this or like that. That's all it does. It doesn't spin all the way around. It just keeps notching there and it comes back. And it has normal sport, sorry, normal smart and sport mode. So normal is just normal. Um, smart is they replaced the eco mode. So the smart mode gets you fantastic fuel efficiency if you're driving efficiently anyways. But then as you get into the throttle, it moves it up to a motor two. So to me, that deserves a like. So if you like that feature, hit like on this video. And uh, that way I know it's something cool. Is there a manual shifting option? Yeah, in fact, there is. Let's get to that right now. Come down to the gear shift. Do you like the look of the gear shift? This is not leather in this car, neither is the steering wheel but it is the exact same shifter as the Telluride. So you get that high-end feature down low. You'll also notice this exact same shifter as the, uh, as the um, Forte over there. So when I put it in drive and I tap to the side like this, I can tap up and I can tap down and that is shifting. Now, again, this is a CVT, IVT transmission. Uh, we can talk about what that means in a minute, but you have eight gear ratios. So if you wanna know what that means, the IVT, we can talk about that closer to the end of the video. Uh, but you have eight gear ratios to sw switch through so you can control it, it is kind of fun. Big thing that people don't expect, and this is again another reason to move to a modern vehicle. You can throw this in reverse like that, you get a clear backup camera. Now that's actually got dirt on the lens. You can see some of those spots, those are showing up more on your camera than they are in real life. That's dirt on the lens there. But when I throw it in reverse like that, you have that clear backup camera, but look what else you get. Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. Now I hear some manufacturers, uh, the Toyota Corolla, I guess, uh, only has CarPlay, doesn't have Android Auto. So if you switch phones, you're done. However, Android Auto and Apple CarPlay in this car make a ton of sense because it brings navigation to your screen. So another reason to move up to uh, a new car is you get this higher level uh, audio system, but more importantly, you get the phone projection. And of course, your phone is not leaving you. You're gonna be, this is not a fad. These things are staying around. So uh, somebody's asking about the trunk. I'll get to the trunk thing in a second. Um, but your phone is always gonna be with you and the phone is gonna do more and more and more things. 
The very base model gets you Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, navigation, voice to text, all kinds of things are easier. And of course, when your car is 10 years old, this is as up to date as your cell phone because the software in that will continually update. So very cool. Google Maps are the most up to date uh, maps in the world. The routing and information is uh, excellent. So that is the way I would uh, equip a new car. And again, might be worth upgrading on that alone. Also keeps you safer and keeps you within the law. Coming across the dash here, you do have cruise control. That's sort of standard. You do have audio controls and Bluetooth controls right over here. One thing that people don't expect, two things that people don't expect, right over here, there's an auto start stop system. People have complained about this to me. They say, oh, I hate those systems. Well, I hate them too in some of the other cars. In this car, I don't mind it at all. So when you come to a stoplight, the car is capable of turning itself off and not idling and not uh, wasting fuel and uh, bad and poor emissions. Uh, so that just works really well, and uh, in this car it works exceptionally well. Some other models, I know some people don't like that feature, it works great in this car. Another thing you get on every base model, every Seltos, right here you can see blind spot detection. Now that blind spot detection, uh, when anybody's in your blind spot, that will light up in orange and you will know that they are there, so you have a little extra safety. Again, might be another reason to move up to a new car, because your used car may not have that, and it certainly may not have that at this price point, not with you know, zero kilometers, or in this case, 74 kilometers on this particular car. Uh, that blind spot detection uses the same hardware to go and give you rear cross traffic alert. So rear cross traffic alert means if somebody was to drive or walk across here, and I'm watching my backup camera, even if, uh, let's say I was parked beside a car over here, so I'm looking out my window and there's a minivan right beside me, I can't see what's coming up behind me, and you can't see it on camera, the back of the car, the radar system that uses the uh, rear cross traffic alert will warn you when someone's crossing your path. Another big safety feature that you can get in this car that you probably won't get in a used car because it is a new feature. Scrolling down here, Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, they do plug into right there. You have dual USB ports there, an extra 12 volt accessory in case you have something else to plug into. This particular car has a storage spot for your phone right here on the higher trim levels that will charge your phone wirelessly. Moving down here again, base, base, base model, heated seats, rump roasters as I like to call them, three levels of heated seats, and they're all right there. And uh, this one does not have the autonomous emergency braking uh, system, and that is because you have to move up a trim line or two to get to that. So uh, again, we're comparing to a used car. This is kind of, uh, you know, sort of the options I think you get. The other thing you get, it was kind of nice automatic headlights here and fog lights. Base model has still fog lights as well. So we'll talk about that in a second but you do have the automatic headlights turn on automatically for you. All right, let's jump out of this for a second. We're gonna go over to the Forte. I saw a lot of you asking questions. Uh, I'm just gonna move to the Forte first and then I will jump back to your questions and answer them on both cars. So that will help us a little bit. Just wanna go right to uh, side to side. The other thing I should mention, both vehicles do have a height adjustable seat. If you pump that lever up, uh, the seat rises up. If you push it down, it goes down. So you can fit a lot of extra, um, a lot of different size people in this car between the tilt and telescopic steering wheel and those, um, the uh, height adjustable seat. Here you get a couple things that are interesting. A little bit more padding on the armrest here than you do in the Seltos. So driver's side and passenger side padding in the armrest there. You also get a leather steering wheel and a leather uh, gear shift knob. So same thing with the key there. Same dash you can see here. Different car that they're showing in there. Let's turn the fans off. So uh, same idea here. Over here with our backup camera, same style backup camera. Now this one has a little bit older software. It's a 50-50 split between things where the other one gives you a little bit of a 60-40 split. It gives you a couple extra features in the software, but nothing much. Backup camera again. Now this one, you do not have rear cross traffic alert because you do not have blind spot detection. But again, this car is less expensive again. It still has Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, so you can move into that. And for some people, that alone is enough. Scrolling down here, uh, manual air conditioning system, same idea as the Seltos. The Seltos just has some updated knobs and different looks there. Uh, same thing here, you can put your phone there on the higher trim levels, you can get your wireless charge pad. Little different situation here, you've got two 12 volt ports instead of two USB ports, but you can still charge all your devices. They still have heated seats, move up a trim level and you can get to the heated steering wheel, which would be right there. Still have drive modes as well. Normal, sport and smart, exact same drive modes as the other vehicle. Moving across the steering wheel, it is identical. Cruise control is there. 
all your audio controls are there, power windows, power locks, power mirrors. You do not get that auto stop start feature on this car. Uh, again, less expensive vehicle, less expensive uh, things going on. You still have the same ability to put it in drive, kick it over, and manually shift through eight gear ratios as well. So little differences there. And uh, again, the real big thing, moving to that, you get something that you can't really get in a used car the same way. Now you also get all kinds of safety features. So I wanna talk real quick I was just talking to Kevin, who was in the room here before we started going. I've been here about five years, and I don't think it's been a coincidence that for five years running, he is the highest quality mass market brand five years running. So to win J.D. Power's initial quality study uh, used to be uh, exclusively for luxury car makers. There was never a mainstream brand that won, and now Kia has won it five years in a row. And that might be another reason to move to a new car. You've got way higher quality than they used to. First of all, across the board, cars are scoring higher now, even if they don't win, they're scoring higher quality scores now than they used to even just five years ago. So the, the floor has raised on quality, but Kia has also raised the roof on that by having uh, higher scores than some of manufacturers have ever had before. So you get quality, you get five years, 100,000 kilometers of warranty, you get roadside assistance for five years, unlimited kilometers, on, a lot of those are really good reasons to move into a newer vehicle. The other thing you get is safety. Both of these vehicles have a ton of high strength steel and especially with Kia, uh, you get a lot of benefit because Kia, Hyundai own their own steel plants. They own everything to do with the steel process, which means it's far less expensive for them to put things like high strength steel, high strength, ultra high strength steel into these vehicles, which they do. That does a lot of things. It helps you with safety, helps you with squeaks and rattles, helps you uh, tune the suspension to get them to ride really, really, really well. And all of that comes into something that you can't get in a used car, but they make them better overall for you. So you can, if you can move to a new car, those are some of the things you get. Are those hubcaps on the Forte? Yes, they are. This particular model comes with hubcaps. The uh, Seltos, again, Seltos cost a little bit more, but it does come with alloy wheels. Now, these are the smallest wheels on the Seltos. They look really sharp to me, but they are 16 inches. Most everything else has 17, uh, and then the top lines have 18 inches as well. So you can move up uh, size-wise when you get into those all-wheel drive, but you have alloy wheels on the Seltos, and you have uh, hubcaps here on the Forte. Let me jump over to your questions again. I know I missed a few when you were asking about Seltos. Some, some of you were asking about uh, the trunk release. Can you pop the trunk from the key? The short answer is in the Seltos, no. In the Forte, yes. The Seltos does not have a power operating trunk, so it is a manual trunk only. Let me just pull the key out of the Forte here. Here's the key that I was showing you earlier on the Seltos. Same exact design, but you have one extra button there. And if you hold that button down, we'll do that right now for you. Let me just shut the door here properly. There we go. So if you hold this button down, which I will do with the trunk in view and you'll see exactly what happens. All right, so there's the trunk in the background. Here's the button in the foreground. I'm gonna hold that, oh, let's try to do this. Hold this button like that. And there you go, the trunk opens like that. So because the uh, sort of gravity fed uh, system of this trunk or the gravity uh, works on its own to pull that trunk up, that's how that works. The Seltos will not open its trunk purely by, um, by a button just because it doesn't have a powered trunk. So the only way to do that on an SUV is with powered trunks and this car does not have that as an option. So I don't know if that answers your question. Uh, both have trunk buttons. Da, 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 da. You prefer the Forte interior, interior with the Seltos exterior. Yeah, <laughs> me too, actually. I, you know, I don't know. I like this, the Seltos uh, interior. I think they both look sharp. One th cool thing about the Forte is uh, when it was introduced, they kind of called it the mini Stinger and it has, the Stinger has these uh, unique style, um, aircraft style vents. These are sort of echoes of that. They look a little higher end in the Stinger as they should, but it kind of echoes that on both sides here. Whereas the Seltos, a little bit cleaner, a little bit more utilitarian look. Uh, the Nero, the new 2020 Nero has a very similar look to this with uh, similar vents across here. Those vents look small, but they move a ton of air. So uh, some people tell me, oh, they're small vents and that's not gonna move the air. That's not the case at all with these. They are really uh, powerful vents in that car. All right, let me just jump through your questions. I know there's a few more I missed. Remote starter, that was somebody asked. So remote start you can get on both of these cars. They do not come with them as is. Uh, now the Seltos does have a remote start. I'll have to double check. I believe it is the EX and above. It might be the LX uh, 
and above, LXO will drive it. No, no, it is the EX and above has a remote start on the key. When you get UVO intelligence with either of these cars, which is on the higher trim levels, then you can start remote starting your car from the app. And right now, UVO intelligence in Canada is free for three years. So you can start the car right from the app on your phone. Uh, and that, of course, can be done anywhere in the world. So you can be in the mall, your car can be way out of range, sitting outside in the mall parking lot, assuming we ever go back to shopping malls. Uh, but you can start your car right from the app as long as your car is within the Bell network in Canada, which is basically every uh, road pretty much in the main uh, stream area. And as long as your cell phone has cell signal, you can send from one to the other. You can also start from your computer. Uh, Albert had a question here. I hope on the next gen Forte has seven inch instrument cluster. Okay, yeah. So one thing that's coming up, this is sort of Albert getting ahead of me here. That's fine. Uh, what's happening in the future? Since it's almost a half an hour, we'll get to some of that. They are starting to move to a digital instru instrument cluster in here, and they have 10 and a quarter and maybe even bigger screens over there. The Celtos is available with a 10 and a quarter inch screen on the, uh, on the center screen. The Forte is not yet. So, uh, of course, we would expect that, but of course, neither is the Kia Stinger. So we still have the same screen, essentially, as the Kia Stinger on both these vehicles. And these are, again, base level vehicles. Uh, the Corolla does, what are we talking about? Corolla doesn't have a full digital dash. Pop the hoods, I can do that in a few minutes, in a second if you want. Uh, let me just see what else we've got here. Base models, up trim, yeah, SX and GT, yeah, hope, of course, yeah. The top line models, we'll see bigger screens coming in the future. But these are already, when you consider what was out when these cars came out, even last year, to have an 8-inch screen in these things was unbelievable. Because, again, the Stinger had a 7-inch screen on the 4-cylinder Stinger, which now is no longer. But it only had a 7-inch screen there and an 8-inch screen on the top line Stinger. Now, in the base model Forte, you're still getting the same screen as the Stinger. So, there we go. So, all right, let me just jump to my computer for a sec. Uh, i got to quickly read... And again, you guys are also remembering that these are base level cars. So some of the screen requests uh, are different in the top line cars. What's the space in the back like in the cars? Okay, so we'll do space in the back. I'll jump in both. And uh, in the rear seats. Yeah, okay. Let me uh, jump in the rear seat. We'll show you. I've got my fresh new haircut from like four days ago. So this is a good time to show you. I didn't exactly adjust the seats perfectly to myself, but I did drive the vehicles in here. So I can't say they're perfect where I would drive long term. Uh, but they're certainly very comfortable. Usually what happens is I put the seat too far back to hop in. So let me just jump over to me. Here we are. Remember I tilted the seat in the Celtos back a little bit? So I'm tilted back. I've got probably about a fist's worth of space above my head, and I'm uncomfortably back. Like I'm leaning almost too reclined for me. So let's just put that up for a second. There we go. There we go. Latch it in place. Now you can see this is where I would sit normally again quite a bit of space. I'm about six feet tall, so there's uh, a lot of space there. You guys are like, laugh out loud, nice haircut. I don't know if that's an insult or a compliment. I don't care. I'm going to take it as a compliment. All right, let me flip the, se the seat around, or this camera around there. Let me just open the door so give you a little more light in here. There we go. There's my knees against the seat. Again, I would probably move this seat up a little bit further. Uh, Albert says it's a compliment. If it was my bosses, I know they're making fun of me just because they have better hair than me. All right, so lots of foot space there. In the Celtos, I have a ton of foot space. So knee space, I meant. And then foot space, I have a ton. You can see if I had big, huge work boots on, I could stack them on top of each other and still have room. There's a lot of space that way just because you sit a little higher. My legs are flat to the seat, so that's pretty good. So let's jump in over to the Forte real quick. And I'll show you what that seat looks like. Camera view here. Again, I haven't adjusted the seat again, but I think it's close enough to where I would have it. Again, I would probably move it a hair forward. All right, here we go. Back to the head. There we go. A little bit less space here. You would expect that. But again, a lot of these uh, small compact cars, I don't fit. I'm six feet tall. No problem uh, reaching in here. And I'm going to open the door again here just to get you some more light. Flip the seat around. Whoa, camera around. That's a little too close. Again, I would move the seat probably an inch or so forward, but lots and lots of space. A lot of these small cars I don't fit very comfortably or at all. Uh, I'm looking at you, Mazda. These cars, I have a lot more room of legroom. I still have plenty of foot space to put under the, uh, the seats, but a little bit less because the seat is a little closer to the ground. That's just the way it works on here. Where's the net on the seats? Not here in the base model. That's the short answer. Again, base, base model cars, you lose some things. You don't have any ports or vents back here either. Uh, you will as you move up in the trim lines. These are, I brought these in as base level cars. LX is the base level automatic car, and that's the base level Forte as well. So great, to, or sorry, base level Celtos. These were new cars. Which would you recommend as a first time car ride? So that was, a, that's a good question. As a first time car buyer, which one would be better? Um, honestly, I would tell a first time car buyer to move to the Forte, probably. Basically, if you're a first time car buyer, 
you've got something really simple, really basic, uh, but you've also got something less expensive, uh, better fuel efficiency, probably lower insurance person. So you safety is the biggest factor in insurance costs. Now, having said that, if I could stretch, I would move to this as my first car. Uh, I am a kayaker, a camper. I would throw my kayak up on those roof racks, which are standard on this car. Uh, every Celtos has roof racks. And uh, so I would want that. Um, I don't need four wheel drive to me. So kind of the same thing, but I also like the hatchback style space because uh, overall cargo volume is bigger in this car. Uh, seat comfort, I think, is similar in both. Just depends on what your preference is. If you want to see a little more square, the Seltos has that. Uh, I really like the safety features on the Seltos, blind spot detection on every trim line. And uh, yeah, it just depends on what you're looking for. And I don't mind the, I think the base level car with these alloy wheels looks really good. But again, that's a more expensive car. So first time car buyer, uh, certainly something like this would make a lot of sense. Uh, again, still got a long trunk floor. You can still fit all your friends. Android Auto, Apple CarPlay on both. Uh, just depends on what you like. If you can stretch, you do get more car for the more money in the Seltos, um, but it just depends on what you're thinking. So good question there. All right, we're well past the 30 minutes. We're 35 minutes in. You guys asked about the Sedona off the very top of the video. There is a Sedona video or pictures out. Now, the one thing I'm, even my uh, fellow coworkers are getting confused about is Kia did release a art sketch of the next Sedona. Um, and then people make renderings out of them. And the, depending on how the headlines and articles are written, written, it appears that that is a official Kia sketch. Uh, the one I've seen most often is not a Kia sketch. What I can tell you is that the Sedona is expected to look fairly SUV-like. Um, certainly that sketch made it look very handsome. And I wouldn't be surprised if it looked something similar to that, but that was not a Kia sketch. Uh, can I do lighting? Yes. I'm not going to probably pop the hoods right now. We can do that in a future video just because I've gone uh, past. Uh, something about EV on there. I just want to see if I can grab that back again. Anybody that has access to a garage at night or a plug should buy an EV. Oh yeah, so I don't know about that. If you're talking, again, EV, I totally agree, is a great car. I own an EV. I don't think it's great for a first time buyer. And again, some of this video was based on if should you buy used, uh, does it make sense to buy new? So uh, if you're buying used to new and maybe you're considering a used car for value, um, an EV to me, seems a little out of reach for some people and that's uh okay let me just turn the key to on here all right let me put the key back in the forte we'll finish with lighting if you have any questions that i haven't answered ask them right now because after i finish with lighting i'm going to go back to questions and then we'll wrap up this video i want to appreciate i want to thank you all for um asking your questions it's uh, more fun the more questions we get and we've had quite a few today so let me turn the lights on here okay forte out front again base level forte no led lighting on this one but they do look fairly similar. So normally there's LED marker lights that form sort of an X around here, and that would be an LED light on the top level trims. Base level trim, halogen light, you can see it's very bright, nice sharp cutoff. Your high beams are separate. In the ones with the LED lights, you have no high beam here. It's a high beam and low beam all together in the same bulb. Signal lights right there, no fog lights. No fog lights on any Forte, even though it looks like it should have them. We've had that discussion a few times here. I agree, if you put those marks down there, even on the highest trim, then you should put fog lights down there. So. Come along the back. You guys all know that I like lights that look like they're not the base level car, and these ones aren't. Several other manufacturers, they just put little circles of light. These are all sort of stylized up, not LED or anything like that. Through here is not a lighting. It's just kind of a mirrored look, but it complements nicely. So the real sharp looking lighting there. Same thing with the Seltos over here. You do have separate signal lights right above the brake lights right here. So these separate signal lights would be up there. Nice uh, sort of carry through lighting into the tailgate there. Coming across here to the front, you have some interesting combinations here. You have a little marker light down there. You have an LED light there. It flickers a little bit on camera, but it doesn't flicker in real life. So it comes like that, comes all the way around to here. On this particular model, it ends here. On the higher trim levels, it actually continues right through to there. So there's the LED, or there's the LED marker light. Headlights are identical on this and the Forte. And uh, same thing, this one has fog lights and they look sharp as well. All right, if I haven't earned your like yet, do me, or if I have earned your like and maybe you forgot to hit it, do me a favor, hit the like button. If you uh, want to subscribe, we do this every single day. We have a lot more videos coming, so there's plenty more coming up. Uh, somebody said I should do a 2017 Sorento. Well, we tend to do current cars. All cars should have fog lights. Info with Sorento and Sportage. We've done a bunch of info on the Sorento and Sportage, so we're not going to do a 2017 Sorento simply because we try to stick with our newer vehicles, uh, but we will uh, continue to do new vehicles here. 
Um, if you want to see a Sorrento versus Sportage video, we just did that uh, probably in the last few weeks or so. Keep uh, If you go to the our YouTube page and go to the uh, live video playlist, you'll find it there, no problem. And uh, yeah, there is a 2017 Sorrento video probably up there. Again, I've been doing videos for f about four or five years here now. So uh, 2017 Sorrento, there'll be a walk around of that vehicle um, new. So if you have a question about the Sorrento, feel free to ask it in the comments when this video is done and I'll get back to you after that. Uh, otherwise, go ahead and watch the 2017 Sorrento video. There was a 2017 walk around of the Sorrento when the vehicle was new. I did do that. So just search our YouTube page for 2017 Sorrento. Ask on the comments, and uh, if I don't answer it in the video, then you can certainly ask it in the comments, and I'll try to look for it and get you an answer. Are there fake exhaust pipes, and if so, are there, are there exhaust pipes, and if so, are they fake? So in the higher trim level, Sorrent, or sorry, Seltos, there is a silver kind of detail piece that maybe looks like exhaust. The lower trim level here does not have that. So rebates may be different in Canada because they make it cheaper here. Yeah, we're talking about EVs again. So we'll talk about EVs again some other time, no problem. Uh, there are definitely re EV rebates, but they don't really bring it down to this kind of price level. So there we go. Signal indicators are up here. All right, so we're gonna wrap this one up. Thanks everybody for watching. Thanks for all your partic participation. And uh, give a little thumbs up for Kevin behind me who's working hard today. And if you wanna see one of our salespeople out there, I'll tell him he's on video. Oh, I can't keep my camera up with him. He's moving quick. Grant was going by, so I was gonna show you him. All right, so there we go. Thanks, everybody, for watching. Have a great uh, Thursday. Friday, we're going to have some fun. We always do on Fridays, so feel free to join us tomorrow. We'll talk to you soon.